Hello, if you've been following along this layouts tutorial series, you now know about columns, rows, parents, children, leaf mode, fitting layouts within other layouts, and you know about reflowing elements. Today we're going to use all of those skills to create this resizable widget. And I think this is going to be a great tutorial because each element becomes progressively more complicated. For instance, the entire thing is a column of three sections. Within this first section, we have a row, and then we go deeper. Within this top left section, we have one element inside. Within the top right section, we have a column inside. Then within this section, we have a row of columns. And then in the final section, we have a column with a row on top, and then two more columns underneath. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new empty layout. Just tap L and then click and drag. If you want to move it around, just tap V and then you can click it and move it around. And let's go through some of its settings. Up here you can see it has a fixed pixel width and a fixed pixel height. Down here you can see it has absolute positioning, but I'm just going to switch that off. That way I can go over here and change it to fill the width of the artboard and fill the height of the artboard. Down here you can see there's some automatically applied padding, and to see this just hover over your layout and you'll see it on the edges. Down here we have a background colour, I'm just going to delete that, and now I'm going to give this empty layout three child layouts. One, two, three. Now that we've added these children, our layout has been converted to a row, and this gives us some more settings to play with. For instance, I can change this row into a column, I'm just going to call this column viewport. We have some automatic gaps set between our children. I'm just going to change the vertical gap to 30. You can see it changed there. And then I'm going to change the padding to 30 as well. I'm going to rename these layouts top, middle, bottom. And now I'm going to give top two children of its own. So just go down here and delete its background and then go up here and click this twice. One, two. And just like its parent layout, we now have some more settings to control the children. For instance, I could add a horizontal gap. Awesome. Now I'm going to open up top and rename this top left and this one top right. Then I'm going to highlight all four of my empty layouts and go over here and set a 30 pixel corner radius. And finally, I'm going to change the color of each of these. This one should be blue, this one should be white, and the bottom one I'm just going to change it to yellow for now. Now, since all of these elements are filling the width and the height of their parent layouts, this means I can highlight my artboard and I can resize it, and all of the elements are going to resize accordingly. Now, before we start this next section, any part of your widget that needs to scale up and down automatically, like this clock, this temperature number, and these four icons, first need to be put in their own artboards. Here I have my four elements within their own respective artboards, and now I'm ready to add them. Let's begin with this first section, the clock. Tap N to nest your artboard, and here it is. The next step is to wrap this nested artboard in its own layout. Shift L. Now we can drag this layout into top left. As you can see, it's changed a lot of things. So let's adjust its settings. I'm going to open up top left and open up the artboard layout. And the first thing I'm going to do with the artboard layout is change its fit to fill the width and fill the height of its parent layout. Then I'm going to highlight the clock nested artboard and change its mode from node to leaf and change its fit from fill to contain. That way, if I change the size of the artboard, the clock automatically scales up or down so it is always contained within its layout. Now let's do exactly the same thing for the temperature in this section. Tap N to nest the layout and then go down to your chosen artboard. Here's our temperature. I'm going to wrap it in its own artboard layout, Shift L, and then I'm going to drag it into top right, like that. 
Once again, this changes a few calculations. So let's just open up top right, open up the artboard layout, and then change the artboard layout's settings. First of all, change this to fill the width and fill the height, and then highlight the nested artboard, change the mode from node to leaf, change the fit from fill to contain. And as you can see, it acts exactly like the clock. Now I'm going to add some text above and below this temperature. T to create some text. I'm just going to type uh, London and then wrap it in its own text layout, shift L. Then I'm going to drag the text layout into top right, but above the temperature layout. And as you can see, London is on the left of the temperature. Why is this? Well, top right is actually set to be a row. We want it to be a column, so you can change it there. Now let's add some text underneath. The simplest way to do this would be to just highlight the text layout and duplicate it two times and drag them below the temperature layout. Now we can edit their text runs. This one should be the weather. And this one will be the highs and lows. Now the next thing to do is to add some padding around all of these elements. And the place to do this is in the elements parent, which is the top right layout. So we go over to padding 30 by 30. And now you might notice something. This section is much larger than this section. Why is this? The top left is set to fill the width of its parent layout. And so is the top right. So why aren't they the same width? Well, first of all, they have an unequal amount of padding. The top left layout actually has zero padding on either side, but the top right has padding of 30 on all sides, meaning it has 30 over here and 30 over here. So it has 60 extra pixels of width compared to the clock. Now, I don't actually need padding around my clock. So how do I add 60 pixels to the clock? Well, you can do this with base size. If I set the base size of this section to zero, and then I set the base size of the clock section to zero, you'll see they readjust, but they are not perfectly equal. What I need to do is add 60 pixels to the base size of the clock. So highlight the top left layout and change the base size to 60 pixels. Now they are exactly equal in size. Let's add some elements to this middle section. N to nest an artboard, and I'm going to bring in my AirPods. Then, just like before, Shift L to put that in its own artboard layout, and then drag that artboard layout into our section. So within our middle section, we have one artboard layout. Let's add some text, T, and I'll just say 10%, and then change the color to black. Then wrap this text into its own layout, and drag it into middle below the artboard layout. Now, if you remember, I want these two arranged in a column, but I'm not going to change middle into a column because what I actually want is for middle to be a row filled with columns. So what I need to do is highlight these two and wrap them in their own column, Shift L. Automatically, they're put into a row, but I can change that easily over here. And now I'm going to adjust this column's settings. So set it to fill the width and fill the height. Then we're going to align its children to the center. And then I can go over here and change the artboard layout to fill its parent's width and fill its parent's height. And once again, I go into the nested artboard and change its mode from node to leaf and change its fit from fill to contain. As you can see, the icon and the number are overlapping. So we need to add a gap in between them. Where should I add a gap between this layout and this layout? Well, in their parent layout. So I go over here and I can add a vertical gap of 30 pixels. And now I can duplicate this column three times. One, two, three. And the first thing we notice is that they are overlapping horizontally. Where do we adjust the gap in between these four children? Well, in their parent layout. So go over here and add a horizontal gap. And then I can see that they're all touching the edge. So I'm going to add some padding around the children right here. 30 pixels by 30 pixels. So if I adjust 
the size of my artboard, they all automatically scale up and down. This is great. However, uh, I'm noticing that the percentages are quite far away from their icon. Why is this? Well, if you remember, each of our columns is set to fill the height of its parent layout. So if we were to set them all to maybe a smaller height, then that would keep the icon and the percentage closer together. How do we do this? Well, just go over here and set the fit to a fixed percentage. And I'm going to set that percentage to 60. However, you may notice something, and that is that they are all aligned to the top. How do we align these four children to the center instead? Well, go into their parent, and over here you can affect the alignment. That's looking way better. Now I'm going to go into each of these nested artboards and change them to a different artboard. So artboard case, yes, artboard phone, yes, and then artboard watch, yes. Now let's add some stuff to this third section and we're going to do it a little bit differently. Highlight bottom and then go over here and delete its background. Then we're going to create two child layouts in a column. So tap this two times. One, two. Then convert it to a column. Then go over here and we can set each of the child layouts individual colors. The top one should be yellow and the bottom one should be white. Then I'm going to round the corners just on the top. If I go over here and I set the corner radius to 30, then it rounds all of the corners. How do I just do the top two corners? Well, you can unlink them and then you can set a rounding amount for any corner that you want. Now I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Unlink 30 by 30. Now let's change the height of this top layout. So instead of filling the height, let's set it to a fixed pixel amount. I'm going to go for 69. Then I'm going to add some text and a little shape layer over here in a row in this top layout. So first of all, I'll create the text and wrap it in its own text layout. Then drag it into the top section. And then I'm going to create a just a little red dot but this can be anything, and then wrap that in its own shape layout and drag it into the row as well. I'm going to rename this row yellow section. And because yellow section is a row, that means that its children are laid out next to each other, which is great. However, both of them are currently aligned to the top left. You can see that here. So let's align them to the center. However, what I actually want is for them to be spread out. So notes is over on the left side and then this dot is over on the right side. How do I do this? Well, you can just tap this symbol again and it will spread out the children like this. Then obviously, because they're touching the sides, that means we just need to add some padding on the left and right. And that's great. And now we come to our last section. Let's create some text. Text example change the text color to black, then wrap it in a text layout and drag it into our bottom section. I'm going to call this white section. And then inside that, I have my text layout and I can duplicate this text layout. And of course, white section is currently set to a row. We want it to be a column. Now I'm just going to change the opacity of this bottom one so that it's gray. Now, as you know, this white section is a column, which means that I can have these two bits of text on top of each other. However, I want two different versions of these text layouts also arranged in a column. So what I'm saying is I want two columns within this column. How do I do this? Well, just highlight our text layouts, shift L, and that will wrap them in their own column. I'm gonna set this column to fill the width of its parent, and fill the height of its parent. Then I can adjust the alignment so its children are centered vertically. And now I can duplicate this column. So we have a column that contains two columns. As you can see, these two columns are touching the left edge, which means I need to add some padding. Where do I add the padding? In their parent layout. And that's perfect. You'll notice that these sections have unequal heights. 
which means we have to edit their base sizes. So I'm going to set top to have a base size of zero, middle to have a base size of zero, and bottom actually already has a base size of zero, which is fine. Now you'll notice that the middle is bigger than the top and the bottom, and this is because top doesn't have any padding, middle has padding of 30 pixels on either side, and bottom doesn't have any padding either, which means all we need to do is add 60 pixels to the base size of top and bottom, and that way all three sections will have an equal height. And now comes the part in the tutorial where I explain how to reflow your elements. So if the artboard becomes wider than it is tall, how do we nudge the notes part to the right hand side? Well, if we were to convert the viewport into a row instead of a column, it would look like this. And obviously that's not good. What we want is to keep these three top sections as one section on its own, and then notes gets nudged to the right hand side. Let's highlight top and middle and tap shift L to wrap them in their own column and then change this column's settings to fill the width and fill the height of its parent layout. Then because viewport only has two main sections now, each section is taking up half of the height. How do we make it so that this top section takes up two thirds of the height? Well, let's change its base size to zero and then change its fill ratio from one to two. This way it's taking up two thirds of the height and this section is taking up one third of the height. And we can now highlight our viewport and change it from a column to a row. And it looks great. Now I just noticed that we need to increase the horizontal gap between these two children. Over here you can see it's still 16 instead of 30. So that looks better. And I don't particularly like the position of these two notes. So I'm gonna change the height of them when we animate them in the state machine. First of all, let's set this back to a column. And now let's open animate mode and set up two states. One called portrait. And inside portrait, we're gonna set a keyframe for viewport and set column. Then the only other thing I need to animate is the height of these two columns. Let's open them up, this one and this one. Go over to their settings and set a keyframe for the fit and the fill ratio. That's great. Now duplicate portrait and call it landscape. In landscape, we don't wanna be a column, we want to be a row. And also if I highlight these two columns, I want to change their height from fill to fixed and then set a pixel value. We have two different states. Let's hook them up in the state machine. I'm gonna drag entry away and delete this transition. Then I'm gonna hook them up to this any state. And I'm gonna set the condition if the artboard ratio is less than one, then go to portrait. If the artboard ratio is more than one, then go to landscape. If I press play and the artboard is wider than it is tall, then we are in landscape. If I change my artboard width to be taller than it is wide, then we transition to the other state. Now I can export this .riv file and bring it into Framer. How do I do this? Well, just go to Plugins and search for Rive. I've used it before, so I'm just gonna tap here. Then I can drag my Rive file into here. Make sure that you select the correct artboard, then tap Player, Rive Renderer, and change the fit to Layout. This enables you to use Rive's layout settings within Framer. So here I have my widget, and depending on the size, it will automatically reflow. Now, I know this widget is not particularly animated or lively, but just remember any part of this Rive file can be animated and interactive.